Hello and welcome to the last video for now in the setting things up from scratch video series I have. This one is going to be about setting up the RTU gateway. So I'm going to get started by grabbing all the different blocks I need and I'll explain them as I place them. So here is where I'm going to put my RTU gateway computer. I'm going to put it on top of an environment detector which I'm going to be using to detect radiation levels. So next is going to be connecting all the other peripherals. So over here I have my boiler and turbine. These are going to need a turbine valve and a boiler valve to connect. So I'm going to put the turbine valve right here. Connect a wired modem. And over here, I'm going to put the boiler valve and connect another wired modem. Now I'm going to route the cables all the way closer to the RTU. And on the back of the computer, I'm going to put another wired modem to connect to that network. Now to make sure these are connected, I'm going to right click the turbines wired modem. It says turbine valve zero connected, and this should be boiler valve zero. Next, I have my induction matrix over here that I also want to connect. So I'm going to add a wired modem to that on an induction port. And then I have a dynamic tank here that I'm going to want to connect. So I'm going to come down here, sneak over here, Make a little spot and put in a dynamic valve. Connect a wired modem to that. Connect a cable. Right click this to connect it to the network. Dynamic valve zero. And of course, don't forget to connect the induction matrix to the network as well. And now everything up here is all hooked up. Down here, I have waste. So I want to connect these solar neutron activators, which I have with Again, two modems, and then a network cable going up. I'm going to finish connecting this. Now I have all these peripherals connected. Make sure I'm going to right click the two solar neutron activators to connect them. For here, I'm also going to want to add a speaker so I can play alarm tones away from the coordinator. And make sure to grab a little ender modem. Plop that on top. You could also use wireless modems if things are close, or at least you have ender modems on the coordinator and supervisor. So now I'm going to set up redstone control. To do this, I'm going to be using Immersive Engineering's redstone functionality, starting with the redstone interface connector block. Some other mods provide bundled redstone in other ways, but if you don't have any mods that do, you'll need to use non-bundled redstone configurations. Then to transmit the signal, I'm going to place some redstone wire connectors. Over here, I want to control the valve, so I'll place them here as well. And then I'll use redstone wire to connect between all the connectors. And now this will connect up the emergency coolant. I want to set these all as outputs. So we're going to have output, we can make these blue. So now I know blue is going to be emergency coolant control, and I'll use that later for configuration. Then I'm going to come down here, use a little trick from immersive engineering and make this a pass through. So now this connects right up here and comes through there. And this will let me control all of my waste valves. So over here, I'm going to put down two, and I'm going to put them on these and connect all of this. So I'm going to get started with configuration. So here, this is going to be plutonium. So we're going to make this an output and make it cyan. Over here is going to be general waste headed to polonium. Let's just make this brown. And here, this is going to be polonium pellets because it's coming from the solar neutron activator and headed into the pressurized reaction chamber. Make that lime. And over here, Antimatter, make that purple. And make sure all of them are outputs. If you hover over, you'll see that. And now to make everything redstone sensitive, I'm going to right click this to make that redstone sensitive. Over here, I'm going to make that redstone sensitive on this pipe. And down here, I'll make that pipe redstone sensitive and this pipe redstone sensitive. And lastly, I'm going to make all the emergency coolant pipes redstone sensitive as well. Now I should have all of the redstone connected and all the peripherals connected so I can get started with the actual setup. 
So as with all the other apps, I'm going to paste the paste bin command to download the installer. Then we're going to install the RTU gateway with CCMSI install RTU. And update the installer. And then install that. Now I'm going to jump straight to startup because that'll automatically launch the configuration app. Do that. And get started with configure gateway. I'm going to try to speed through some of these because it's already covered in the RTU configurator guide. So channels, I left them all default. All this stuff I had default. I didn't have a facility key set, so I can skip this. I'm going to leave the logging default. I'm going to leave the themes and stuff default. Uh, apply this. So now those settings have been saved, but as you may have noticed, I didn't set up anything else. So now I need to set up the peripherals and redstone. So I'm going to start with peripherals, hit add. This list shows what the RTU gateway sees as connected. If something's not showing up, make sure that it's got this little red border that it's connected. So this is not connected, that's connected. And as devices connect and disconnect, they'll appear and disappear from this list. So quickly, let's do the solar neutron activators. These are just very simple configurations because you just set the unit and that's it. I'll add both of those to unit one. Then next I'll do the environment detector. This is gonna be reactor unit one's number one environment detector. If I had two, the second one would be number two and so on. If this was for unit two, I'd change this number to a two. Save that can add the induction matrix, which is just for the facility. So I just confirm, very simple. Next, let's grab the dynamic valve. So this is gonna be reactor unit one's number one dynamic tank. Since reactor units can only have one tank, if it was facility, you could have more. And then turbine, this is reactor unit one's number one turbine. So this is meant to be read as a sentence. So it should make sense as that. So if you have three turbines and two of them are on unit two, You'd have reactor unit one, number one turbine, and then you'd have reactor unit two, number one turbine, and then reactor unit two, number two turbine. This numbering isn't global, it's per reactor. So it'll always start at one for each unit. And lastly, boiler valve, same kind of numbering, move forward with that, and then apply. And I'll go back home to continue configuration. And now I can configure the redstone. So here are all the different port options to get started. I know I set up all my waste, so I'm going to use this to quickly add everything and it's all on the right. It is bundled and this is for unit one. So this is going to add four default colors, which don't match what I actually used. So now I know plutonium. I did that with cyan. So we'll set that. Polonium we did with brown. Polonium pellets were assigned a lime. And antimatter was assigned purple. And I also have emergency coolant. So let's scroll down for the unit emergency coolant. This is also on the right. It's also bundled. And this was assigned to blue. Now you can see the inverted digital output. For mechanism pipes, they're going to be open, which would be a valve open when the redstone's inactive and closed when the redstone's active. So that would mean if the RTU hadn't started up, there's some issue, it would default to letting in emergency coolant. So I only need one entry here since all of those redstone connectors were set to blue. And I can now apply these settings. So now that I've set both my peripherals and redstone, I can exit here. Now I'll exit and it'll start up. I can see my redstone for unit one, my solar neutron activators, my environment detector, my turbine, boiler, dynamic tank, all of that stuff. You can see the induction matrix is assigned to the facility, whereas all this other stuff's on unit one. And speakers, they don't need to be configured. They're just going to automatically connect and then a number of them will show up here. And now I've jumped over to my unit two setup, which I already hooked up everything. So we don't have to waste any time there, but it's still not configured. So again, I'm going to paste the installer command and install it. So I'll configure this RTU same way everything was default, move through all of this, and then I'll set all the peripherals again. So here I only see bottom, so that means we got to connect everything. So over here, it's going to be SPS zero. Do a little sneaking down here. Dynamic valves, one. Boiler one and turbine one. 
Then down here is the solar neutron activators. And now those are both connected. The redstone waste control is the same. I believe these are, yeah, okay. these are all already redstone sensitive and it's the same colors as the other one. Now I can see I didn't have to restart anything. The peripherals just automatically showed up. So SPS port, it's for the facility. It's only one, move on with that. Solar neutron activators. Make sure these are set to unit two now. Environment detector, this is going to be unit two's number one environment detector. Dynamic tank, this is gonna be unit two's number one dynamic tank. Unit two's number one turbine, remember not number two, because this is unit two's own set of turbines. Last see your boiler, unit two's number one boiler. And apply this, go back home, do the redstone. Again, this time I'll do the waste manually just to demonstrate. So plutonium waste, it's going to be on the left now. It's bundled and plutonium was assigned cyan. And this is for unit two. Do polonium pellets, left, bundled, lime, unit two. Antimatter, left, bundled, purple. Polonium, left, bundled, brown, still unit two. And then I'll do the emergency coolant, which is also going to be blue. It's left, bundled, unit two, and this is blue. Now I have all the redstone, so I'll apply that. And then I can exit, and they'll start up, and I can see again, just like the other one, I've got all my entries here. So back in my control room now, I can see that my boilers are online, my turbines are online, induction matrix is online, along with the SPS dynamic tanks. The number of solar neutron activators for each unit is displayed right here and right here. And with each valve, there's a little name and with the light next to the name is lit, then it's connected. So I know that I have all of my waste valves and the emergency coolant valves. On the coordinator's main display, you can see the number of linked RTU gateways, which matches the amount that we set up. And the same thing on the supervisor, I can see them in the RTU tab. So this unit here is the remote terminal units, which is what RTU gateways contain. It has each RTU. And right here is eight and eight. And I know that if I looked at an RTU, I would see eight line items, just like so. Got redstone and all the way through the induction matrix, which totals the eight that I see. So I know that everything's all connected. So now if you follow through all these videos, you're ready to run your reactors. And from here on, it'll just be how to use the system. And thank you for watching. If you need help, you can go to the Discord and the link for that's on the GitHub, or you can go over to GitHub as well to use the discussions feature to ask some questions.